I will be reading Proverbs 3, 9, and 10. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall the barns be filled with plentiful and the press, presses shall burst out with new wine. Thank you, buddy. I was noticing how many of y'all have had the last two weeks, and uh, somebody told people that I was coming to preach this morning because we're a little off, I see. So uh, next time, y'all be quiet when you ask me to come back, okay, Sean? Okay, Lindell. Y'all know it's always a pleasure for me to be here. So many of y'all I've, I've got to know over the last year, and it's, it's a blessing. And as I stand up before you, as I say so many times, I stand before beautiful people. And I appreciate so much the effort you're making to, uh, to continue in the Lord's Word and to continue in His work also. And uh, I've just heard about some baptisms lately, and that's a wonderful thing, isn't it? And, and uh, to see our families uh, grow up in the Lord is a wonderful thing. There's so many temptations out there now, and uh, the Lord will get us through. Uh, tonight, I encourage you to uh, come back. Uh, uh, tonight's going to be a really rough lesson uh, because it's, it's a Harold Kelly original, and I've been working on it for some time, and it's called Stay Out of the Ditch. So y'all can imagine that's going to be pretty interesting. It's going to be, uh, we're going to be talking a lot about freedom. Uh, and truth and I hope you'll come back tonight as we study in the book of Galatians uh, I've been teaching a class on at 1030 every Wednesday at Owens Crossroads and any of you are invited to that a lot of our older members come to that uh, class because they don't want to drive at night and so we started that class about a year ago and it's at 1030 and we'd be glad to have anybody that would like to come and we're studying the book of Galatians right now we're following Romans uh, which, you know, the, uh, I, I guess Galatians, you could look at it as a miniature version of Romans, but it's so rich. And it means so much to me. When somebody mentions the word Galatians, I just start screaming, freedom, freedom, freedom. I believe in freedom. I'm an American. I appreciate so much, uh, Steve. Uh, Steve, the time that you're taking to plan the service. Uh, I got a call yesterday, which I don't usually do, you know. I get a call and uh, somebody, Harold, what are you doing? I better straighten up and give somebody a scripture and give somebody a topic. Uh, I, I don't know if you've noticed what he's uh, attempting to do. He's, he's trying to keep, I can tell, the service going. And uh, it's so good when we can just get in here and it's pile in here like a bunch of brothers that love, and sisters that love each other and, and to sing to the Lord and, and raise him up and, and do that continuously. And that way we can sing more than we usually do. You know, sometimes we get in these routines where we, two, we call, I call it 212. <laughs> you know, we, we'll have a couple of songs, but then everybody's feeling like singing that day so we all just keep singing you know and, and raise the roof uh, for the Lord but I appreciate the time brother that and anybody else that's happened with this that y'all are taking to do that so tonight might be kind of rambling so I give you uh, that but today is, is going to move uh, I, I'm remembering what Basil Overton told me. I, I trained over under for three semesters over at IBC, which is Heritage now. Uh, after three semesters, of course, they kicked me out. But uh, he always said, you brothers, stand up, speak up, and shut up. So that's what I'm going to try to do this morning. My wife uh, doesn't cook a whole lot, but she can cook. Her mother was, was a fantastic cook, and she learned to cook from her also. I don't get many of those meals, but when Thanksgiving and Christmas comes, I just can't wait because she makes this cake called a mandarin orange cake. And some of you ladies, maybe you make that cake, but you know it's, it's chilled, and oh, it's just so good. When I start eating it, I just can't, I just can't stop. It's, it's so good. Well, let's pretend like uh, I've just bragged about that cake, and, and I decided, well... You know, old Steve, uh, I love that brother, and I, th I think I'll just go over there and, and share this cake with him. So I've already, and, and the family's already been in on the cake and everything, and there's one big piece left, and I'm not going to give that to Steve, so I have to stay it. But I say, Steve needs to taste this, so I take that cake pan over to Steve's house, and I say, Steve, I just want you to taste this, but I just want you to have the crumbs, okay, because this is all, it was so good, I wanted to eat it all myself. Now, how would you feel about that? You wouldn't like that too much, would you? Well, let's say that uh, 
instead of me being such a pig that I told my wife, I said, I'm going to take this, this cake over to Steve's house and I want them to have it. And, and, and I read, he means so much to me and this cake is so good there's not anything on earth better than this cake and, and I'm going to take it to Steve and, and uh, Steve I take it to you and, and your family and, and I, I, I say Steve I, I want you to know I love you I love your family and, and I'm passing this cake on to you I just want you to have it but I want you to know that I brought my fork with me <laughs> and I want a piece now how would you feel about that you see, I, I proved that I loved him because I gave him the whole cake. God has proven that he loves us because he gives us the whole cake. Brethren, when you think about what God has done for us, I tell you, he doesn't give us crumbs or leftovers. He gives us the best. You think about what God has done for each one of us, how he gave us Jesus on the cross. It's the principle of the first fruits. You see, before I was born, long time, before you were born, God did his work. If you read in the book of Acts, you know from that book uh, that, that God foreordained all those things. He made those plans, and uh, Jesus died. That was all on purpose because of their love for us. And only through that, you see, could we be redeemed. Think about what that means what that could should mean to us how special that should make us feel because you see God don't give us any crumbs he gives us the whole cake we love because he first loved us and it's elementary I know y'all but we just need to remember every day of our life that God gave us his best when he gave us Jesus Christ you think about all the things that God spoke into existence all the things that he had around him the most precious thing was Jesus Christ the Son and he gave him first he went first another thing that God did for us was that through Jesus he's the first fruits of the resurrection he was raised and he said likewise we'll be raised also one day he's going to come back and get us if you look into the book of 1st Corinthians you see uh, that that idea In the Old Testament, the first fruits were given before anything else to God. God intended it that way because he wanted them to know that what those, those things came from him. Brethren, how many times do we go through our lives when we don't show God our gratitude? We don't show God his greatness uh, because we don't appreciate what we have. You know, and we allow the things that we have to get in the way of doing things for him. Uh, when you talk about first fruits, what the farmer would do, he would have that, maybe had a bumper crop, you know. And uh, what he would do, he would be excited, you know, maybe, maybe let's say he had apples. And he took that first basket or that first tenth of those apples, he took them to the temple and he took them to others to share with that. Share that th with other people, you see, because he knew where it came from. It came from God. And brethren, we need to see today and we need to see all our lives that we are the first fruit. Uh, we are special. And God deserves for us to treat him special. Now, God can get by without me giving my 10% or 20% or 5% or, or whatever we give. He can get by without that. But you know what's important? It's not keeping the law. What's important is keeping the heart. God said do it, so I do it. The first fruits mean everything. And we are the first fruits of God and His Son is. Think about the first fruits of the Spirit that God has left us. Do y'all see, I want to challenge you this morning to see that, that, that those things are the way that we can see heaven where we can see just a little touch of heaven think about romans eight twenty three says love joy peace and patience the fruits of the spirit are ours because god doesn't give us the leftovers he gives us the first fruits think about those things that i just read over love joy and peace how can you beat that there's not anything and there's not anything that can give you that 
uh, tonight I'll, I'll probably talk about some worldly things, uh, some things I'll be trying to get you to laugh about. You may not laugh with me because you may not even understand where I'm coming from on those things. But I can tell you, when I look at my heroes, uh, I, I, uh, Steve may not want me to say it, but y'all probably already know. You know, me and Steve rock and rollers. We, we like to rock and roll, you know. And uh, those guys live some rough lives, don't they? They live some rough lives, you know. And, and uh, uh, a lot of them, they don't acknowledge God, you know. Uh, and, and that's a bad thing. One day they will face God. In fact, some of those folks are, are facing God now without knowing Jesus Christ and how terrible a thing that that is. Well, the Spirit gives us love, joy, and peace, and patience. You want things to go well in your life? You see, you've got to enhance that you've got to work with that you know christianity is 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 a thing that, that we move on you know we don't do it by commandment even though we do we keep god's commands we follow god's commands but it's a different attitude isn't it when we follow god's commands because we love him someone had asked me well harold how did you feel when you obeyed the gospel i was scared to death i wasn't scared to walk up the aisle I was scared that that night that if I didn't accept the Lord, and y'all know that when I tell you what I said, that my heart was ready. If I wasn't baptized that night, I knew that I was going to hell, and I didn't want to be lost. You see, I did that out of fear. Fear, belief in the Word, out of commandment for the Word. But guess what now? The way that I look at the Lord. Well, I love Him so, as Jesus said, my commandments are not grievous. They're not heavy. Uh, because I want to do it, you know, and, and y'all are there in your Christian life. I hope you, you're relating to what I'm trying to say. You know, it, it's a different call now. It's the call of love. And that's the thing that the Spirit feeds us. I want to encourage you today to go first to God with your problems. If there's anything, brethren, in the church that we waste, it's prayer. When y'all have your care group meetings, I'm sure you do, but make sure you pray. When y'all get together, something's going on, you're hurting for somebody, you know, just get in a huddle and grab somebody and, and go and pray about it. I'm, I'm telling you, brethren, you want things to be stirred up in your heart, stirred up in the church. Brethren, let's pray. Let's, let's pray more. If more of us would go to God with our problems, instead of trying to solve them ourselves, the world would be so much easier. And what's sad is even that we, a people of the faith, don't go to God as we ought to with everything. You know, think about how that sets peace up. I'm supposed to do a little uh, uh, wedding planning, I think, coming up, Steve. There's a, a scripture in 1 Corinthians, the 7th chapter, that talks about the relationship between a man and his wife. And what that scripture is talking about is don't be angry with each other. Don't be the point where you don't, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, speak to each other anymore. No, get things right. Get things right with God so that your prayer life will not be hindered. It is so important, our prayer life. And I want you to think about, since this is the first of the year, that you will think about your prayer life. It's so wasted. If you want the church to, to grow and to be what it ought to be, if you want your hearts to grow like God wants them to, then be people of prayer. The moment a problem surfaces, think about what God promised. Y'all remember in the sixth chapter of the book of Matthew, verses 25 through 33, consider all these things God says about worry. Jesus says, don't worry about anything. God closed the fields. God takes care of the birds. He feeds them and everything. Believe in God. And then he ends up in verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. See, we get it all reversed. Well, let me get this all together. There's this young man at Owens Crossroads right now that I'm trying my best to get him to obey the Lord. He thinks he's got to be perfect before he does it. I said, friend, you'll never get it all perfect. Rely on the Lord. Rely on Him. Rely on His strength. And, and uh, go to Him with your problems. And don't worry about what's going on. Just try to change. But allow Him to come into your life. And to be Lord of your life. 
The moment a problem comes up from now on, brethren, let's think about going to God first with it. It's something you, you maybe your kids are struggling in some way or whatever. Get in that closet. Go to that quiet place. Go to that mountainside. Whatever you need to do to get away with God and just beg Him and just plead with Him. Those things will change your life. You know, and another thing to think about when you pray, the devil. Y'all ever thought about this? The devil's not even gonna be around. He ain't gonna be a part of you being prayer, prayerful. The more we pray, the more our problems are minimized because we lay these things over to God. Second thing is uh, to honor God with the first fruits of your income. I've already referred to this a little bit. The Bible says in Exodus 13 and 2, Consecrate to me now all the firstborn. Whatever opens the womb among the children of Israel, both man and beast, it is mine. The firstborn of everything, the first thing produced in your field, uh, your work, where you work, the first thing, go to God. It's, it's about attitude. And see, if that happens, then God just keeps on blessing us and blessing us. I'm not a TV evangelist up here trying to tell y'all. The more you give, the more God's going to get back. But I will tell you this. Y'all know in your life that that's true. The more you give, the more God's going to give. The more you get out of the way and let God run things and just do what he would want to do, to be moved in his heart, to have compassion on people when you see them hurting, when you see them out of needs, that ought to move us. It ought to motivate us to give. I'm not trying to get up here and advocate you've got to give 10%. I, I'm advocating that, that your heart ought to be stirred. And, and God is trying to use you uh, to give back to his creation. You know, Jesus said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength. And he said there's another commandment that's just like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. You see, that's God's business. And we're after God's business. The first fruits is what God wants. He says, bring them to the house of God and share them. All the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Our relationship with God is built on first, you see. You see, he loved us first. We love him first. We don't leave him the crumbs, and we don't leave him the leftovers. Another thing that y'all hear a lot, and you've heard this from me when I preach up here, but it's so important. Together on the first day of the week with God's people, what a blessing it is for us to come in and, and you know, We've come together today, this special day. The apostles in Acts 20 and verse 7 said the first day of the week is the day that we worship. In the Old Testament, which is done away with, remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. But you know the thing that I see that's kind of different that I'd like to challenge y'all on about the way that we worship on Sunday now? I remember when I was young uh, that my parents... And everybody, not everybody, but most people in the church took Sundays to visit. They, they took Sundays to visit. They took Sundays as the day of the Lord. And what I've done and, and what probably more than likely a lot of you do is you give them this hour or two and, and then you're just gone. You know, you, you're gone into doing whatever else that you're doing. This is the first day of the week, you know, and the first day of the week ought to be God's. All that changed, you know, when I, I remember, it, uh, is it, was it the blue law that we had? Do you remember when there's all the stores? I know y'all kids aren't going to remember any of this. You don't even have any idea what I'm talking about. There used to be a blue law, and the only thing that you could, that would be open on Sundays would be the uh, drug stores. That, that's all it was open. Well, then the drugstore started loading up, you know, on their counters with all kind of stuff that you could go in there and buy. But all that got done away with, and now Sunday's no different from any other day, and that's so sad. But you know what's sad? It's sad for the world, but it's sad for us that we don't take any more time to do what was once done. Why don't we challenge each other to, to do more? and to help more and to visit more and to take Sunday. So I love the way y'all go to these nursing homes and work. That's a wonderful work. It's, it's a wonderful work. Yeah, we, we come together here to together, together to worship God. You want God to bless you the other six days and remember the first day. He'll bless you. God has something to say to you 
when you hear. He may say it through a hymn. I was, I remember about a month ago, I was um, worshiping at, at the Spanish Fort. When I go down to Dolphin Island, I, I've got to where I'll go there now because I have some friends there that, uh, he's a youth minister there now. And so uh, I've been going to church there when I'm away from home. And uh, I was by myself. My wife wasn't with me, uh, and, and uh, I was doing some work down there and stuff. And, and uh, I'll be honest with y'all, I was lonely. And I sat in that, that uh, worship service, and uh, that old boy that was leading that singing, man, I mean, he was leading one right after the other. You know, and, and boy, he was singing, and I'd get to singing. Uh, there was two songs I got to sing, and I got to the second, uh, or the second part of the first verse, and I'd start bawling. You know, I, I, I was feeling, you know, the presence of God in my life and knew that, you know, uh, I'm lonely here. I, I need to hear this, you know. And, uh, but you see, those guys that were worshiping there, they didn't even know me. But I was there with people that I didn't know, but people that I knew that loved the Lord. And because I was there that day, my heart was moved. The sermon was fantastic. And, and, Sometimes we, we just get into a routine of where maybe worship is not what it ought to be in your life. You know, maybe you're not moved. But that's why we've come here, brethren. I had a friend that told this old story about uh, this guy in Texas. Uh, he was legally blind and, and he would have his, his, his son to bring him and, and leave him off at the door. And he, he never missed church service. So this one old boy that was feeling really good for himself and trying to be helpful, you know, and trying to take over the man's life, thinking, you know, maybe this man don't know what he's doing. I'm going to make things a little easier. And he said, brother, he said, uh, you know, God understands. You don't have to come here. You can't even see. He said, I don't come here for me. I come here for you. What if we regarded our when we come together, our fellowship together, what if we regarded it like that? What if we looked at it like that? Let me read a familiar passage to y'all if you want to look at with it. But I think what we do, and I do this, is that I focus too much on 24 and 25 without reading the context. Y'all look at Hebrews 10, 19 to 25. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest of holy by blood, by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us. Through the veil that is his flesh and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. And let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised, that's God, is faithful. And let us consider one another how to stir up love into good works, not forsaking the ascending of ourselves is together as a matter of some, but exhorting one another and so much more. As you see the day approaching. To me, that kind of changes that passage when I read it in context. He's talking about our relationship to the Lord. He's talking about, brethren, this is a matter of heart. This giving thing is a matter of heart. This, this assembly thing is a matter of heart. It's where you are with God. And so I ask you today where you are with Him. God wants your first fruits. He wants everything. He, he did that for you and He wants that from us also. Hebrews says, chapter 2 and verse 1, Therefore we must pay closer to attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away. Brethren, we can't do that if we don't hang out with each other, if we don't challenge one another, if we don't ever open our Bibles till we come here. You know, you think about it, uh, we prepare, or should be preparing for worship. When we come together, we ought to be, have our minds right when we get here. Boy, you talking about things going well, they'll go well. But we prepare for that. You see, God puts these plans in force so that we won't drift. So that we won't drift. 
Most people grow so cold in their faith. Just a little at a time. Just gradually. Some of y'all that are really interested in, in, uh, in visitation and, and, and uh, missing people when they're not here. You know that's true. You know if we don't get right on that. You know maybe somebody's been coming solid for a year. And then all at once they quit coming. And we don't go and, and look into that. You see, it's just easy just to put it off just a little more and a little more. And finally, they just quit coming. And that's the way it happens to us. You know, it just, just a little bit at a time, we just inch away from God. We inch away maybe from the responsibilities uh, that God has given us. I got a feeling somebody's groaning inside. Harold, don't you put this on us. Don't you put more on us and we can stand. We can't give more. I'm doing all I can. I can't even hardly get here in the mornings, you know. I'm, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. I can't handle any more. Oh, yes, you can. You can handle more because this is God that we're talking about. I'm talking about first fruits. I'm talking about the God that said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Bring your full tithe to the temple treasury. So there will be ample provisions in my temple. Test me in this and see if I don't open up heaven itself to you and pour out your blessings beyond your wildest dreams. Our young brother read that to us earlier. Y'all believe that? Do you really believe that? You see, brethren, it's not just about giving. It's about changing this. It's about getting this part right. And none of all those other things will happen. You know, if I, if I just give because it's commanded, it's a totally different thing. We'll talk about that a little bit tonight. You know, we give from the heart. That's what God wants first. When we put God first, God's blessings will begin to flow. God give us his firstborn son. And the Holy Spirit gives us the first fruits, as I mentioned earlier, of heaven. Why don't we make this a year that we're going to respond to God putting us first in our lives? In uh, the book of Psalms, David is responding to his sin with Bathsheba. And I've said something about this before, I know, but this to me is the most, and we're going to close with this today. But if y'all look at Psalm 51 with me, let me tell you what God wants. He wants your heart. All these other things will be right when we get this right. Okay? I'm going to read uh, verse 7. Don't forget, David, that Paul, he thought he'd gotten by with it. He thought he had did these things. He had, that's he was puzzled. He'd done all these terrible things. Nobody else knew it. He had it. So he thought he was my way. But um, God knew it. But he knew what he expected. Hey, think about the expectations of being the king of Israel. And the way that God had blessed David. And the way that God and David had their own special relationship. Here's David that it seems like to the whole country, he's got everything together. He's a man of God. He don't have any sin in his life, but he does because he's like the rest of us. David thinks he's got it all figured out. He's, he's full of himself. He's got six wives and, and he's got all his children and he's got all his riches and everything. Everything's going for him. And now because he's so powerful, he can do anything he wants to do. And God's going to be all right with him. Verse 7. Since David's been called, this David has committed all his sins. He's trying to carry one right after the other. He says, purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I'll be water and snow. Make me hear joy and gladness that the bones that you have broken may resort. You see, we, sometimes we don't want to face our problems with God. We don't want God to break our bones because God is a God of chastisement, isn't it? He's going to correct us, and we don't want to go there. But now that Nathan has exposed David where he is, he's going there because he knows what's important. He don't want God to take away what he's blessed him with. Make me hear joy and gladness again, that the bones that you have broken may rejoice. Hide your faith from my sin, that blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, 
There will be a steadfast spirit within me. I just talk with the Bible, y'all. I don't talk to you, hold on. Don't cast away. Don't cast me away from your presence. And don't take your Holy Spirit from me. You see, I realize God blesses it. And I always came through your spirit. Always came from your love for me. Always came through because you and I had this special thing going on. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your tender spirit. Let's get down to verse 16. Where you come to sacrifice. Y'all, that's the given. That's the, that's the attendance. You don't require that, even though we just read that he did, right? That's a difficult question. You don't desire sacrifice, or else I'll give it to you. For you did not delight in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not. Because he trusted in the Lord. 